Hello, friends. I'm thinking about you with so much tenderness in these days, and I miss you. Earlier this week, I officiated a memorial service for a person who was a part of my life long ago. And it was a small gathering, of course, due to the pandemic. And this was a person who died a couple of months ago and the family had to wait until the time felt safer to be able to have a farewell celebration of life. And the funeral director was recounting to me uh, what he witnessed as the daughter of the deceased walked into the space, saw the flowers and the heaviness of the grief and the intensity of the loss settled on her shoulders. She began to weep. And he said to me, you can't run away from grief, even in a time like this. How true. We can't run away from grief. And we grieve the death of people we love for our lifetimes. But there are other losses in our life that we grieve too. And this is a time of loss. And this is a time of grief. I was recounting to someone a painful um, period in my life, a sort of a life-altering decision that had to be made and the outcome. And I said to her that I did not give that incident, the emotional attention it needed, which is another way of saying, I didn't grieve that loss like I really needed to. And that grief has followed me for several years, tapping me on the shoulder until I would pay attention and acknowledge that what I was feeling was grief and sadness and despair and that I had to do some work and be thoughtful about those feelings as I began to make peace with my past. So I know that many of you are experiencing grief in these days. The world is an uncertain place. Many people have had to give up so much. There has been loss of job, loss of life, loss of the way things once were. And so pay attention to your grief. And if you need to talk about it, I would welcome a conversation. So as I was thinking about these things, I returned once again to my favorite blessing writer who knows a lot about grief, Jan Richardson. And she wrote a blessing entitled, Blessing for Falling into a New Layer of Grief. Because we don't just grieve and then it's over. We grieve and then it changes and then it changes again. And sometimes those changes surprise us. Sometimes those changes in grief level us. But always those layers of grief are meant to beckon us into something else. Richardson writes about this particular blessing. Grief is the least linear thing I have ever experienced. It is hardly a tidy progression of stages. For me, it's more like learning to live in a house where from time to time I crash through the floor and land in a room I didn't know was there. This is a blessing for those times. You thought you had hit every layer possible, that you had found the far limit of your sorrow, your grief. Now the world falls from beneath your feet all over again, as if the wound were opening for the first time, only now with an ache you recognize as ancient. Here is the time for kindness, your own, to yourself as you fall and fall, as you land hard in this layer that lies deeper than you ever imagined you could go. 
Think of it as a secret room, this space that is open before you, that is opened inside you. Though it may look sharp in every corner and sinister no matter where you turn. Think of it as a hidden chamber in your heart where you can stay as long as you need, where you will find provisions you never wanted but on which your life will now depend. I want to tell you there is treasure even here, that the sharp lines that so match your scars will lead to solace, that this space that feels so foreign will become for you a shelter. So let yourself fall. It will not be the last time, but do not let this be cause for fear. There are the rooms around which your new home will grow, the home of your heart, the home of your life that welcomes you with such completeness, opening and opening and opening itself to you, no part of you turned away. Amen.